Hey, welcome everybody. We're here again with uh, Michael Miles for our fifth edition of the Clawhammer workshop series with him. And uh, today we're going to be covering playing uh, Bob Dylan's You Ain't Going Nowhere. So, hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks, David. Yeah, yeah it's good to have Great you back. To be here. Yeah. So, so, so we, uh, why'd you choose ahead. this song? Well, I like, you know, D D Dylan, uh, he's, he's still on tour and uh, we, uh, he has put his thumbprint indelibly on uh, the music of America, the music of the world. And, uh, and it doesn't get played that much on the banjo, but um, you know, they're folk songs, just like all the songs that are played on the banjo. Dylan's songs are like folk songs and, uh, and they're tuneful and they're, uh, and the one that we've chosen for today is uh, "You Ain't Going Nowhere," and I like this one because it's it's pretty simple. <clears throat> we can we can sketch out uh, the chord progression for vocal accompaniment, and then we can sketch out uh, improvisation uh, on the on the melody and the chord progression as well. Awesome! Yeah. Do you want to uh, play some of the song for us so we can get it back in our ears? Most people probably heard it, but uh, let's. Uh... Yeah. And you hear it on a banjo as well. Yeah. Clouds so swift, the rain falling in. Gonna see a movie called Gunga Den. Pack up your money, pick up your tent, McGuinn. You ain't going nowhere. Ooh, we ride me high. Tomorrow's the day my bride's gonna come. Oh, Lord, we gonna fly down on the easy chair. So there's a there's a little bit of it a verse uh and a chorus and uh what we can start with on the on the banjo three different parts they're all in one and it it has like a, it has a chord progression that's that's repetit re repeating what is that chord progression right so the chord progression just goes g to a minor to c and back to g and it just it does that over and over and over again and uh there's no there's no change to it and uh to me it marks the uh, a characteristic of, of actually of great traditional music um, that I, I'll just call elegant simplicity. That um, you know, uh, I write music, you write music, David. I'm sure, and and and, and uh, to come up with a chord progression that just is G A minor C D, and G again and again and again would strike me. Um, it's, you know, when I would be writing something is like, it's just too simple. I would, you know, like uh, a little complexity might be considered better. But in fact, there's all these great songs, two chords, song, like Shady Groves, a simple two chord song goes on. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason that it still gets played, it has this elegant simplicity and it's Darwinian. It's just beating out all, you know, there's all kinds of other songs that have fallen by the wayside, but shady grove indoors and uh, and you ain't got going nowhere is in that is in that camp in in a in a way and so in in that it's simple um and mm -hmm. uh yet yet it's engaging and we uh you know and it and it still gets played and it's and um we like it so so we can kind of jump right into it the and this sort of follows our uh opening when we talked about uh, the 37 ways to play G, C, and D, you know, there's different ways to get at these chords. So I'm gonna just sketch the chord progression here. And it's just one measure of each, one measure of each chord. So here's a G, I'll start with this G. It's just a simple um, G, but I like this, This, you know, it's based on the full four finger G that has all the strings fretted, but I kind of like to leave strings one and three open. So I'm gonna leave them open. And then, um, and then the second chord is A minor, and A minor. If you, if it, that's a four finger chord officially, on the banjo, but you can play just the first, second, and third fingers of it, and uh, 
and add your little finger when it's good and ready. So we go from this G. And see, you see I grab the three finger A minor, pull off that C, and then C. And C is the same way. It's you take one finger away from the A minor chord, and you can do the same articulation on that note on the first string. So and then you're back to G, and you can just do the open one. So I put those together. And uh, then right into the ooh wee, ride me high. Tomorrow's the day my bride is gonna come. Oh Lord, we gonna fly down on the easy chair. It just, Can you, it just you show us again once what you're doing on that G chord again? Because you aren't playing that full G chord, are you? Right. It's a it's a when you play it this way. Uh, leaving the first string open and the third string open, you just get G's and D's. If I strum it across like that. So my ring finger is on the fourth string, fifth fret. My index finger is on the second string, third fret. And the other strings are open. And, this, and the result is that the banjo sounds bigger. You, you put the, the open second string in there, uh, uh, or play that whole chord the, the the it tightens up a little bit and it's more it's more precise you leave it open it sort of has that medieval ring when it's only it's only fifths it's like a punk rock power chord and you can play around with that the absence and presence of that b note on the third string see that i'll hammer on pull it off but nonetheless, it gives it that rich G sound, which is particularly good for uh, um, unaccompanied playing and your and uh, mm -hmm. and and for vocal accompaniment. Yeah, you get that sustain of the note, which rings out, and uh, you know, versus when you're fretting all of them, they kind of even if you hold them down, they kind of don't ring out as much as an open note. And, and that's uh, you know that's the uh, with with especially with claw hammer trying to use open strings you know the more we can uh, incorporate them and stay in you know be, be, we're going to be in the G tuning for the the key of G and we'll be in a C tuning for the key of C but, but it's a, yeah it gives a great sound and then the same way um, going to the A minor this this chord A minor. When I leave the first string open, where I'm now, I'm um, I have the second fret of strings three and four, and the first fret of string two, and the first string is open. That note, that's a D note. It's not in a A minor chord. So to to make it A minor, I need to fret the second fret, but I don't need to have it A minor all the time. The suspension. Playing, playing with the absence and presence of that high E note, the second fret, is is what makes it interesting. Like so, uh, here from the G. That sound of just from the, there's the E sound, there's the D sound. It's just kind of, you can think, I like to think of it as vocabulary. It's not like uh, this is E, A minor suspended, that's A minor. And it's it's minor seventh when we include the fifth string. So, because that G note is not in an A minor chord, is but it is an A minor seven. So we so it just makes it richer sounding. Mm -hmm. and, and then the same th same thing happens with uh, when we go to C. Um, it's playing with the absence and presence of the the open first string, the D. When it's in a C chord, it's a, it would technically be called a C add nine chord. Sounds just like the A minor suspended, sort of, but, um, but it's just C. C with a D added. And then back to plain old G. So if I was like those, the, the A minor and the C chord, the, of what you're doing of doing that suspended, 
suspension there. Um, if I was playing another tune, when could I use that sort of when when would it be okay to use that sort of um, technique of of you know adding in a note that's not in the chord? Do you just use your ears, or do you, is there kind of a a way you know way, a, kind of a soft rule to kind of guide you? Well, uh, from the notion that it, it's all one song, <laughs> you can use them all all the time. And and yes, you you let your ear decide if you if you like and and how much. So if it's if you you know any anything that you do over and over and over again is going to get, um, it's it's going to create some static. But what this does is it creates some expands your vocabulary and makes it makes the so instead of thinking that um, when you get to A minor. Well, it's time for it. The, the chord progression goes G, A minor, so I have to play this chord. Well, that mm -hmm. chord sounds kind of stiff. So if I went from G to A minor and just kind of strummed them like that, there's nothing happening. But with this uh, open up the G chord, and, and this could be any song America, not, not just you ain't going nowhere. And then get to A minor. That's this. This is a this is A minor. Um, but you can you can always use it. And I and, and the best. And it's a great question because, yes, you can use it everywhere. Anytime you play an A minor, you can experiment with uh, with the sound. And and in these songs, before the song is over, you're gonna have played this progression countless times. And so so to uh, avoid uh, it getting too static, you can you can. Um, play with those uh, articulations around the chord uh, and you can you can also do the same with any of the notes in the chord with hammer-ons and pull-offs and things to make it because the first string is a uh, the first the first string is D but the fourth string is D as well so um, you can do that And I'm just I'm just um, trying to uh, add in hammer-ons and pull-offs to just to add some interest, you know, as much. And and uh, when we um, um, do the song accompaniment versus the an instrumental break, the song accompaniment I might be a little more conservative and do less. And then the instrumental break. Um, I'll do, I'll do more because uh, because there's no there's no vocal there so so that the uh, the song accompaniment part literally would sound uh, not too not too much going on there um, but then if then let's say uh, uh, it's nice to take just and here's where here's where the where you can have fun with it and improvise with the same idea because now you've memorized g a minor c to g you've memorized the chord progression and you're just going to go from from one chord uh here's the g g two three four a minor g a minor C to G again. And 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 the and the reason um, uh, when when I uh, sing or when somebody else is singing, <clears throat> the I like the I like the banjo part to be uncomplicated, so that if it's if it's just me, it's the banjo is accompaniment, and and the accompaniment is. Uh, um, supporting the voice. The voice uh, is where I need my concentration to be because I want to sing it so that you believe it, that you hear it, that I remember the words, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, and so, so it's like the voice part comes first, and then um, when it gets to the instrumental, then the instrumental part comes first. And and you can, uh, I, I always would take uh, people like. Uh, 
oh, uh, James Taylor, you know, when he would play his songs, there'd be like a fancy signature guitar part that would start the song. You hear, you hear the beginning of Fire and Rain or whatever these songs, then they have these distinctive licks. And literally, you could track his concentration. Here's James Taylor looking at his guitar, thinking about his guitar intro. Now the intro's over. Now he's going <laughs> to now he's going to sing and his guitar part gets way simpler when he sings. And yeah. then and then it comes around to the to the instrumental signature or a, or a, 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 a or a, a, an entire break or something and his concentration goes to the instrumental part. And then when it's back to the singing, the instrumental part gets easier, simpler and he's thinking about telling the story of the song. Yeah, I, I was listening to Jimi Hendrix this morning on my walk and uh, and thinking, listening to how he does that exact same thing. Yes. You know, he's obviously, you know, one of the best instrumentalists ever, and uh, but also an incredible singer, and he, he really changes it up when he's singing versus, versus yeah. the instrumental. Right, right. It probably makes you walk faster, too, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so is there um what is there an uh, a variation that you could do from what you're doing is there an up the neck variation um, yes yeah so um the the up the neck one i like to start um i'll start here because when we uh, um there was this uh g chord the one in the middle of the neck seven eight and nine but all of those on the on strings three two and one and and, and what's great about this G and G tuning is that anything you do sounds good. Uh, especially that note, the ninth fret on the first string is the B note. That's the same as the open second string. So instead of this, I'm gonna do that. And then A minor, and here's a new here's a new chord shape to to just learn, and it's a um, seven on the first string, eight on the second, and three and nine on the third string. So, so there's that. And then um, and when you play that chord, because A minor and C are relative to one another, meaning that they have um, they have two notes in common. And so those two notes uh, that they have in common are the where your second and third finger are when you play the A minor. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is uh, go from the and um, to from this A minor shape to just a little hammer on to uh, to a. Uh, a uh, one note G chord. So watch this. Uh, and so all that is, is uh, here's the G, G. And I'll just play the G part four times. So here's G. And then here's the A minor. It's just a, and I'm just playing each of those notes with my finger going down. Brush them sort of. And then the C, I'm gonna stick with that A minor shape with leave those fingers where they were and just little do a little hammer on up to that ninth fret and with that and then we've got so that that's a partial that's a partial c um the first string is open so i'm not really hitting it very hard and the fourth string is open and then and then and then we're back to g and uh that's a G, the seventh fret where your index finger was for the C chord. That's a G note. Or you could jump up to 12. So I put them together. Here's G, A minor, C, G. Again. And 
that's um and i kind of like to do uh because the verse is four four times through that progression so that's twice and so the and i'll do almost like a call and response so that the first g is going to be at the seventh fret on the third string and then the second and then the when it ends on the, uh, after the end of the fourth time i'll go up to 12. so you'll see watch this so here's g a minor c and g at the seventh fret and then g again a minor g at the 12th fret so you get that And there's um, there's that progression. So that in context, um, uh, a question, David, or we. Are you, so are you not um, you're not using any of the open other than the fifth string, any of the open strings right at right now. Well, on the G chord, we are. So you can strum all of them. You don't just strum yeah. the single note. Yeah, and the A minor. That's all. Uh, no, no, no open strings there, other than the open fifth string, because, because it's A minor, going to be A minor seventh, uh, and then yeah, and then the C is uh, no open strings, and in fact, I'm letting my uh, index finger uh, as it frets the third string. It's actually touching the first string, so if I, so it's it's kind of muted. And then to this G, just here's a one finger G at the, which is only like playing the D note at the seventh fret on the third string. And you can slide right into that. And you've got, you've got all the open string resonance coming mm -hmm. with it. So, um, okay. yeah. So then having the, so now we've got the lower break. same idea of a a minor c and it just uh fits kind of nicely in into that and that in the context um would be to use uh you know you could have them as um as ingredients for d doing a, in, an instrumental break uh and um and it can and it can change up you know you'll find what what will happen is as you do this uh, you'll discover, oh, I like this, and I well, when I dis I'll discover something new. And so it's not like it's not like this is um, these are the proper breaks for for you ain't going nowhere. The, the what's the, what's required is attending to the chord progression, and yeah. then uh, and then you let your let your ear decide what you like, you know, do I like, like the sound of that one or I, or I forgot the sound of this one or I, or wh whatever, whatever, whatever it is you get, you know, you get to decide. And what's, what's great about this song, I think, is that it's uh, the simplicity of it, that you can hold that entire chord progression in your head, you know, and I was like, does, yeah. it, go, does it go to F there? Does it, no, 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 it's just G, A minor, C to G <laughs> and over and over again. And and there's uh and there's and there's the song, you know, the whole thing. So, do you ever do uh, instrument uh, not do you improv well improv breaks when playing this song and just kind of on the fly make stuff up? Absolutely, and and uh, and you do it by, um, but you regardless of of what you would do, um, it's so those those breaks are not necessarily scripted like that they're just they're just ones that that work and you can write the script as you go along the only thing that you need to attend to is you know staying with the chord progression 
And so, and ideally that the, the improvisation that you do uh, reflects the chord progression uh, versus uh, playing like a pentatonic scale that might sound fine for uh, for four measures, but would just be noodling around. Whereas mm -hmm. what makes for good imp improvisation, I think, is when you can hear the chord progression in it. And, and sometimes uh, if you choose to, to sketch out the melody um, and, and you can choose to do that, to sketch out the melody, or you can choose not to do it but still stay with the chord progression that makes sense would you yeah not to put you on the spot would you could you give us a little example of 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 an improv on, on this sure uh, uh, let me uh, let me put it in context of uh, uh sing a little bit of it uh Ooh, we ride me high. tomorrow's the day my bride's gonna come Oh Lord, we gonna fly down on the easy chair. And so there, I yeah. you know, it was just, that was a, just a little bit different, but I'm there's not, uh, but I'm st I'm still staying with, you know, the notion of G A minor C. Uh, and back to G and and trying to stay true to it and and the uh, um, when we um, uh, and, and there's a there's a couple different ways to think about it one of them is um, uh, if, if we think if we thought more rhythmically like I was as we we're doing the the thinking of this is kind of a folk song it's kind of one two three four one two three four one two three four one so that's um th I'm thinking in terms more of quarter notes if if instead i wanted to think in terms of eighth notes then it's one and two and three and four and 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 go so you have uh uh an eighth note uh, you know there's more the like the ske sketching out the, uh, the an eighth note idea which which um uh and it doesn't and they don't have to be um mutually exclusive you know uh in in other words you could uh, have a, a little bit of a... so here's one and two and three and four and one two three kind of a where um, and I think that the I think that the thinking in terms of rhythm. Uh, has always is always been op an eye opener for me because then you, versus just you know okay we have uh it's it's like you fill in the blank one and two mm -hmm. and three and four and what's what's and and you have a space um and and then a target like going from g to a minor there's my target was a note in the g minor chord it doesn't have to be the a note it could but uh but one and two and three and four and one and two and you know or uh when he ended you know, When it gets busy like that, um, it sounds it sounds like a little. It sounds like it can sound like overkill, but you get the yeah. idea of uh, yeah. of uh, how it can how it can work. So, so that's kind of it. You know, there's a there's a there's the song, and what and what's what's great about it, I think, um, is that you can take these principles and run them to the bank, and take you know use them over and over and over again, uh, and that that idea of of 
uh, that the s song accompaniment wants to have uh, a, a, you know, a simple and strong uh, feel to it. And then the improvisation wants to be um, reflecting the chord progression. You, and if you do both of those, then you're then you can you can basically take any song uh and you know and and apply the same principles so that that it, that improvisation is like well how how do i improvise is could be a question how can i i don't know i don't know how to improvise i just know that i can but i can play a folk song but the improvisation um because the folk song melodies are are oftentimes the melody notes are right in the chords if you uh, play around with the chord shapes that you know. There's a G sound, just based on the chord shape. And there's a improvisation on the A minor, based on the chord shape. Hammer rounds and pull ups. And uh, and and so that that can provide. Um, uh, in you know just instrumental interest and and a break from uh, stepping away from how the song sounded when you were singing or somebody else was singing. Yeah. It doesn't need to be too. It doesn't need to be too complicated. Those are. I think those are good closing words right there. That it doesn't need to be too complicated to uh, you know make some good music. Yeah, I like the idea just simply of a, a you know a f instrumentally that. Uh, we're, we're kind of doing a sketch, you know, think of it as a sketch. You're just like, right. you don't have to deliver every nuance uh, of the, of the melody. And sometimes, sometimes like in the, even in Dylan melodies, say it's, he can, he can be quite monotonic. He doesn't, there's not a, sh there's not a lot of shape to, uh, to it. You know, he'll be hanging right. on a, f a few, a few notes. And so you can, you know, you sketch out a bit, give me a melody note here, a melody note there keep the chord progression driving it and all of a sudden there's a beautiful instrumental break yeah well everybody uh thanks michael that was a good lesson everybody uh go go practice this this tune um on your own and uh if you have any questions you can you can reach out to you you know in the comments on here and we'll get back to you and uh and any final thoughts michael um no just uh just have fun with it i mean that's that's the that's the bottom line have fun with it and then and take what you discover to the other songs that you like i find that people practice uh you know you might not like this song very much um <laughs> but and if you don't just take the idea and take it to a song that you like you're going to practice more of the songs that you really like so so enjoy that exactly. all right well this is good um thanks mike all right and we'll be uh Look out for episode number six coming soon. Sounds good. Bye. Bye-bye.